Warning! This podcast contains Frankenstein. <clears throat> What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SC Not TV podcast. Podcast? Podcast. For once, <laughs> once upon a time, Rewind, season two, episodes four and five. I'm your host, Dom. With me, we have Jake, Nikki, and Rachel. How's it going? Hey. It's going. It's going, it's going. Uh, just for, first and foremost, as always, must warn you guys, if you are not caught up all the way to the end of season six, once upon a time, turn back, leave now. We will be spoiling things that happen in the future, including for this season. So if, if you know... If if you're not caught up on Once Upon a Time, just just run away, run away. We're Turn just, back. We're recapping. All events. hopes is lost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All the signs. So let me start off by asking: you, out of the two episodes, which one was your favorite? Hmm. I have to think about that actually. Hmm. They were both really, really good. These are my two I, favorite episodes this season. I wouldn't say that about these two, but they're pretty good. Like, they're up there. I think mm. for the first time meeting Hook, um, that episode, The Crocodile, is probably in, like, my, my top ten episodes. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say that. It's like, well, you meet Hook and the Crocodile, so... so. <laughs> well, I just I just love these big reveal episodes. Yeah, I mean, my back favorite when, thing with this... Back when the stuff is still surprising. Well, my favorite thing with this is we go from Rumpel being Cinderella's fairy godmother, right, to being the beast, and now it's revealed that he's also the crocodile, and it's just like, this, this is when I was like, well, Rumpel's literally everywhere! Like, we already knew yeah. that coming out of season okay, one, well, but now it was like... technically he wasn't her fairy godmother because he killed her fairy godmother. Right. But he was the pseudo. <laughs> he was a he was a, he was right. a substitute. But yeah. yeah. Well, he hates fairies, and you know this. this well, we all thing. know why. He so he's not the fairy godmother, but he just he was stepped into that role. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like I love this because of that. You guys know my feelings toward Rumple. So a Rumple centric episode, you know, like this. Uh, fantastic for me. Absolutely. Uh, this is Hook's it. episode actually about mm-hmm. where we see. Hook's mm-hmm. hatred, bro, where it developed. Yes, but it is also well, Rumpel's episode because we're seeing yes, it from Rumpel's I mean, point of view. It's a Rumpel episode. It's a Rumpel episode, but it's also one of Hook's many backstory episodes. Oh, of yeah. Course. Um, and then I really like the Doctor, too, because the reveal of, of Dr. Frankenstein, like, out of nowhere, it's just like, when you watch this for the very first time, you didn't see that coming. You know, like you didn't. You had no clue who he was. No one. There was so many theories out there. No one knew who he was you at know? first because not even it's like not even like the town knew who he was. Yeah. It's like no one knew who he was. They're like, "Who are you?" He was. That's not important. He's just like oh, it kind of is important. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. No, it's important. He he said it wasn't important, but yeah. yeah no, but it, 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 no, it's important. Uh, no, no that's of course just, it is. You can like, do a certain. You can do a certain thing that a lot of people in this. Well, at this point in the show, they thought it was impossible, but, you know, we could just do that all willy-nilly now. Yeah. So, all right, so for, let's start with the Crocodile episode. Uh, we open up with a, a dream sequence from Belle in uh, Rumpel's shop, um, where he gives a necklace to her, Grumpy comes in, wants his axe, and then almost dies because of it. Mm-hmm. And, uh... So we we already see Belle's tormented from, you know, nice Rumple and, and evil Rumple. She's still dealing with this conflict, um, even after waking up from a curse. Um, and then she goes and spies on Rumple in his basement while he's doing alchemy and magic spells with gold and, and things like that. Um, but what it, what it all boils down to is he wasn't doing anything wrong until he... Uh, didn't tell Belle why he was doing stuff. Uh, I don't understand why he has to keep this a secret. And one of the reasons why this is like one of my least favorite seasons is because they paint magic in such a bad light. Um, so like with Regina's magic and with Rumpel's magic and like everybody 
even with, the, even with um, you know, even in the next episode, even with Jefferson's magic, they paint it very everything very evil. So like, and it was, I mean, yeah, there was you know, magic in season one was seen as like a bad thing as well, but there was also you know good magic, you know, like with Blue and you know other magical characters. But like in this season in particular, and especially at the end, you know, with um. I never remember the names, but, like, the the two, that couple that, like, wanted to destroy all magic. Like, magic was just always seen as a bad thing in this particular season. And I like that in the sense that it's, like, magic versus technology in, like, the later half of this season. But, like, I just don't like when all these other characters, um, like, or, you know, the good guys, just, like, see magic as, like, like the worst thing ever. Yeah. Well, to yeah. be fair, I mean, the only the only people that we see using it this season really are people who are evil. Like, we have Cora, we have Regina, who's trying to change her ways, and then we Rumpel, and then, you know, it's... We don't see Emma using her magic yet, because Well, that's, she, that's, she has it. She has she it. Just, she just doesn't well, I mean, we see well, it. Of it. Well, if you she think did about touch, it. She did, when, well, when she touched Regina, yes, trying so to get the hat work. She became a worked. catalyst for Regina. Yeah, she has it. She does know, just no one knows that she does. Right, but if but you, blue, if you but think blue about this too, magic. if you think about this too, look back to like the Disney animated films for a minute. And outside of the fairy godmothers and like Tinkerbell, when do you ever see magic? It's always like a fairy type character. Elsa, Genie. There's probably some other ones I can't think of right now. Merlin. Genie's, Genie's a bit of an exception. Neutral. He's a neutral magical being because he his his magic can go either way depending on. But the he's a good. Speech. But he's a good. He, yeah. He himself is a good personality. Yes, but his magic is different. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Elsa. I didn't even think about her. Yeah, she's. Yeah. She's, she's, a, she's I mean, the one I came up with was Sword in the Stone. You know, but once again, that's Merlin. Like, Merlin. Yeah. 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 On the other hat, on the other side of that, you got Madame Mim, who's like yeah. amazing. Right. And I don't know why we didn't get her in the show. God, maybe maybe now we will. Yeah, so I don't know. Magic is is portrayed weirdly in in all of Disney because m- mainly it's it's used for evil in Disney. Um, mm-hmm. You know, yes, we have like the genie who's a neutral being, but then you have Jafar who's a sorcerer and he's hypnotizing people and using it for evil. And then you have Snow White where you have the the evil queen you know has magic powers and no one else in that that realm does. And then you have in Maleficent, you know, it's the same same thing, even though she's a fairy. Uh, you you do have the three. Uh, well, the Eagle Queen never did necessarily Mary have cool powers. No, uh, yeah, she did. Um, Eagle Queen didn't necessarily have that. She was like more of a like an alchemist. Alchemist, yeah. Her magic came from which I guess is magic. It is magic, but, it, but it's she magic. Didn't, she's she not innately magic. magical. She's yeah. not a magic. She's a she's a human. But yeah. we've seen in this show as well. Mm-hmm. Just like the evil queen in, just like Regina in this um, show. She wasn't innately magical. She had to learn no. magic. Mm-hmm. Unlike someone like she Emma, had, who was like born everyone, with magic. It's like everyone that has, everyone has potential to have met, has in them. It's just whether or not you choose to train it or not. Yep. Because that's what it seems like. It seems like, because he found someone, a new student, and, you know, she just looked like, she actually looked like, um, Esmeralda. That's just me. <laughs> Rapunzel King Train. I don't remember Rapunzel having magic. Magic hair? No. Her hair, but I mean... But that came from a, a that flower. Came from I a mean, flower. Disney's Rapunzel I guess is magic. not not the Rapunzel's in the book. I mean, Rapunzel in the book, her hair was magic because it grew very long. She was in a tower. That's it. It wasn't like... It didn't have a she mind of its own prehensile or anything. It was like a monkey's tail. Yeah. She didn't. She didn't have magic. Her hair did. So For the most it? part, though, in Disney, magic is portrayed. You know, the, the early cartoons and everything. Magic is portrayed. It wasn't until more recent with Disney that they started moving in a different direction. Yes, yeah. things like King Triton existed and and whatnot, but for the most part, well, the majority also had of magic you know, the bad. Mickey and the Sorcerer. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorcerer. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, Yensid. Mm-hmm. Yensid. Yep. Um. So. Shortly after this fight that that Bell and and Rumple had, because you know they get into a fight because Rumple wouldn't tell Bell why, and she like storms off, um, and then she goes missing. Like we see her 
in the diner talking to Ruby, and that's like the last we saw of her, and then she goes missing. Um, so Rumpel goes to her father's shop looking for her, which is a Game, Game of, of Thorns. Thorns. Yep. You know, that's that's not a reference to Game of Thrones, another storybook, you know, mm-hmm. so it, it made sense, it made sense for them to do something like that. Um, and then you see, we see the dwarves still mining for fairy dust, they're still looking for that, David's down there. David, the instant he gets any kind of, uh, oh, Jake's gone, uh, any kind of, uh, dust on his, his hands, any kind of coal, whatever. He's just like, peace. He just leaves. We see Ruby in there. She's, uh, she wants to bring lunch to everybody. She, she still doesn't have a big role. Um, and, uh, then we have, uh, Rumple looking for David, um, trying to help, uh, find Belle. And that led to some really, really funny scenes. Um, because... Mm-hmm. Then we have Ruby helping to to track with her her wolf scent smell, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. Leads to the father shop. But in the meantime, we run across like um the butcher. You know, and we're like, but but you you turned his father into a, a pig. He's he's a butcher. You know? Yep. Mm-hmm. Led to some like really he, funny uh, he's like it's like he's trying to, you know, he wants to find he, Rumpel wants him to find a uh, bell, but he's not letting David do his thing. He's standing in the background. No one's going to talk to David when they see him standing back there. <laughs> and even if they did want to talk to David, they're not going to, in spite of gold, because of all the things that he's done. So mm-hmm. it's not like he's. They're not intimidated anymore. They're pissed off. Yeah. A little upset. Yep. Is Jake back yet? No. Um, and he's then, restart. Okay. Um, and then uh, we find out that Belle is being transferred. She was kidnapped by Shmi. Speed. Mister Shmi. Um, and hmm. It's Speed. Okay, but in the Disney cartoons, it's Mr. Shmi. It's however, whatever. It's a guy, and it, we're pretty much right. Um, we know who we're talking about. Yeah. Let's continue. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, but it's in the, the original animated cartoon, it's Mr. Shmi. Um, so, in uh, we find that he kidnaps Belle, takes him down to the um, the mining tunnels, which mm-hmm. David instantly recognizes because David didn't like to get his hands dirty. So he's just like, oh, I remember when my hands looked like that. That's terrible. Oh, you were down in the mines too. So instantly identifies that that must be where Belle is. And uh, they're, they're playing oh, and sending... Oh, you ruined your manicure as well. Oh, hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, All right. And... Um, Sorry, I'm just try chat. It's Mr. Smee. Senor Smee. Um, and then, uh, so Rumple goes marching down there, uses his, uh, his powers to drag Bell's mining cart backwards across the, the town line, um, just before it goes over mm-hmm. and, uh, saves her. But Bell chooses that, yeah, even though Rumple did come to her rescue and she's very thankful that, and she's appreciative. She still wants nothing to do with him. Um, and she's mad at both of them for what they did. The father thinks that what he did was the right thing, and Belle's just going to come crawling back to him. But Of course the father thought he was doing the right he's thing. He's being worse than Rumpel is at this point. Rumpel, Rumpel merely is keeping something that is personal to him that he's not ready to share a secret. All right? That, yes, the, I could see how that's bad from Belle's point of view. I get that. But it's not anywhere near as bad as what her father did. Her father tried to erase her memories, turn her into a different person, and basically control her life. 
That's way, 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 way worse than what Rumpel did. Well, we did see, we have seen, like, later on in the flashbacks, her dad's always been like that. Oh, yeah. He's always been um, the only one that ever bag. kept, the only one that ever kept him in line was her mom. The one her mom was gone, he just went, like, hyper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, I know I was pissed off at her dad. I'm like, dude, she's, like, old enough. She's, what, in her 30s. She could do what she wants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Daddy. Well, I feel like um, in that particular era, dads have or have been and always were controlling for their daughters, anyways. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. I don't know. But that's been 28 years ago. It's also not the same place. Yeah, yeah that's. Uh, Belle does get a key, though, uh, while she's eating dinner at uh, the diner. She gets a key to the library, which, you know, now we're throwing back the Disney roots of Belle liking books and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, And we find out that Belle got the key to the library with an apartment, and it was from Rumpel. And Rumpel doesn't Now we know that where she was staying this whole entire time. Yep. (laughs) Rumpel doesn't want anything out of it, right? He's just like, nope, here. Keys, the place is yours. I, I'm not asking for anything. And what I want you to know before we don't ever speak again is why I was doing what I was doing. I'm trying to find my son. Uh, I'm Magic is too much of a crush for me, crutch for me, and I can't let it go. And, you know, she basically asked him on a hamburger date because she's never had one. So. Hey, I'm sorry. You know, I always talk about the fashion list. That actress should not wear like neckline. Yeah, Shirts she was at all. wasn't she pregnant or just no. get it or just had a baby? Not that time for this. I know, I know. Around this season, she was pregnant, but still, ha- but she was ha- that was the only time she's worn like a turtleneck type. And but well, I'm just it's saying, not even like, yeah, it's not even a turtleneck. Was it was I don't know. It just looked really bad on her. Yeah, it looked really bad. I'm just like I could uh, for some reason that's what I focused on. It was like that collar, call is I couldn't focus on anything else. It made it really hard. Well, see, up until this point, the actress uh, Emily De Raven, who plays Belle, um, she's been she she'd been in a couple roles uh, before playing the role of Belle, and every single time she was on a show. She was pregnant. <laughs> Not in real life. No. In in the show. Like, she mm-hmm. played uh, a character on Lost, and she was pregnant on that. You know, that was a huge, huge integral part of the plot, was her being pregnant. Um, and then Once comes along, and I was like, oh, she's playing Belle and, you know, Beauty and the Beast. I was like, she's not going to get pregnant. And then later on, she gets pregnant. And I'm just like, come on. Come on, Belle. Yeah, to be fair, though, that's like five seasons in. No, I know. I was just hoping that we'd get one show that she's not pregnant in, you know? So it's like she's cast in, like, this stereotypical mother role. So. (laughs) Yeah, it's really interesting. Her husband just needs to get off of her. She has work to do. Get off of her. Jake's back. But Rumple uh, ends up having Mr. Smee uh, locked in the basement. He's he's looking for Captain Hook, uh, and Smee's like, "Look, the curse never took him. I have no clue where he is." And then it cuts to uh, Captain Hook in real time talking to uh, Cora, telling uh, that he wants to skin himself a crocodile. Uh huh. Later, we find out how they. Uh... How that section of the Enchanted Forest uh, yeah. got saved. Now, like, before we start talking about the flashbacks here, like, Rumple is sitting in town telling Belle, you know, all this stuff about, you know, wanting to get his son back. And at this point now, I'm curious how he even thinks for one moment that Bellfire <coughs> is still alive. Because we know that Rumple is, like, 900 years old. Yeah. Right? And we know Bellfire went into the portal 
just after he became the Dark One. Yep. So, what for one minute makes Rumpel think, 900 years later, that Belfire's still alive in this world? That That's what I want to know. How does he think he's in... Why does he think he's in this world? Because this is not the first world Belfire went to. No. So what made him think that he'd be in this one? I think cause well, because... His, his, his premonition, that thing where he could see the future... And it's well, then all that's jumbled. how we know he's alive. Well, when they, the when, when, when they saw, got the the bean from, or whatever he got, that was a bean, from uh, Blue, she was like, it'll take you to where there is no magic, basically. And so that's where the portal goes, and that's what he thought he was going. Well, the, the bean took him, which we will later find out in this season, the portal did not take him to our world. Mm-mm. Took him to a world without magic. Yes, yeah. it took him to... But not this one. Um, London. Fictional London. Fictional London, not mm-hmm. real-world London. That took him... It was a parallel London. Yes, yeah. the same the same way no, we actually, have... Actually, the real London is just in its own universe. <laughs> it, it, it's the same way we have, uh, you know, uh, where Alice grew up was in its own realm. It's not tied to our realm, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. Alice and Wendy are neighbors. It's all cool. Yeah. It's so, a parallel... They are, the you know, he went to a fictional London that's not tied to the land without magic, which is our world, um, and then went to Neverland, and then ends up here. So, I, pff, yeah, I don't know. But, anyway, so, going into the flashbacks for this episode. But see, that makes a whole, that, that opens up a whole new can of worms there, because when they went to, um, when they went to Neverland, and they saved Wendy. Wendy had aged, but her brothers has aged, but they were in this world, so they went from the fictional London to our world, yep. and they never aged. Well, they aged. They were like teenagers, mid-twenties. They were yeah. hipsters. But, yep. yeah, so it's like, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> yep. I don't know. We never got answers to that. I but um, With the Rumple flashbacks, um, this is where we first meet Mila. Um, where she's quote unquote lost track of time, uh, playing j- drinking games with pirates. You lose track of time in this world. I would lose track of time playing drinking games with. We'll see. Well, she, uh, she see, I, there are no care, clocks though. in this world. It's so not yeah, there is no clocks. Track but it's not that she lost track of time. It's she legit just didn't want to go home. That's why. I or said she legit lost track just of time. didn't have a clock because they don't exist. Is, so let me go look at the moon. Happened. They have sundials. Let me go. They, didn't have, they don't have sundials. What the fuck are you talking about? Never in this world. Have we seen a fucking sundial in this world? Maybe. Let me go see what, what time it is by the moon. Actually, I think there was a sundial when we first met Cruella and the puppies and all that. It, almost positive there was a sundial when the, uh, the clothes were on the, the hook. Or the hook. When the clothes were on the clothesline, I think they ran by a sundial. The puppies. I don't think so. But that wasn't the Enchanted Forest, I don't think, anyway, so that doesn't matter. No. Um, but, yeah. No, she just didn't want to leave. Um, and then... It, Did it's, you mainly, have a son? it's mainly because Rumple at this point. And then Belfire comes into the tavern and unintentionally guilts his mother, you know, into uh, leaving. Going home. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sorry, Mila is just a bad person. Well, yeah. But if you're unhappy, you know, it's your responsibility to, like, take yourself out of that situation. Yeah. But you have a son. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, but you don't, like, have your husband or ex-husband say, okay, just leave it to him to explain where you're gone. Okay. She thinks he's useless. She thinks he's a coward. She has a son. Instead of, you know, leaving your son with this, you know, in in your opinion, and a, a guy that can't take care of himself. Why do you think he can take care of your son as well? So take your son with you. Yeah. Don't go with the pirates. It's bad. No. Yeah, no, because oh, her whole was, mentality yeah. at this point, she goes, oh, I found I found uh, these pirates. They're willing to take me in, but they're not going to take care of my and son. And they're willing too. to take a lot of things from you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot your of booty. Dignity. <clears throat> booty. Dignity. <clears throat> the, the pirates aren't willing to take care of the son, so she has no choice but to leave the son if she wants to get out of this this life. It's either sacrifice herself and her happiness 
for her child, which but she, again, was gonna she should be doing. No. You was going to die from venereal diseases. <laughs> Yeah, but we don't know if they were willing to take in her son. We don't they, know that. No. I don't no. think. You know what? I think Hook would have done it. I think Hook he would have done he would've, it. He the would've crew been would a not have accepted he, it. They would have made him a cabin boy. And like he would have been swabbing the deck and shit. And you know, actually, they would have taken a lot of things, the same things that they were taking from Mila back in those days. That's what cabin boys were actually for. And Lewis I says, Mila I, wanted sex. Let's be real. I don't know. Yeah. I love Hook. Hello. <laughs> I don't think Hook would have would have allowed his crew to do that to. No. Uh... At this time, he wasn't Hook. He was he was Killian Jones. Yeah, yeah. but even like, though he was a pirate, he still had <coughs> his I can't some say, morals. I can't say he that she doesn't this. care for Balefire or never ca- cared for Balefire because if she didn't, Balefire coming into the tavern wouldn't have convinced her to leave. Right. Yeah. So she definitely cares about her son to some degree. Um, but clearly not, not more enough. than herself. That's what it comes down to. Mila is extremely selfish. I mean, she could have left, but still had contact with her son. If she, her son didn't have to think that she died. She could have explained it to him. He was old enough to be like, hey, your mom, dad and I, we're not working out, and I can't do that. You know. yeah. But, you know, the, the thinking your mom died this whole entire time, yeah, well, what makes it worse is, uh, if you guys have owned the DVD for Once Upon a Time, there's actually a deleted scene uh, from this, this particular episode where when Hook goes... It's, this is after Hook goes uh, looking for Mila. Um, or Hook goes looking for Mila. After Rumple goes looking for Mila, and they say she's dead, you know, and all that, there's a deleted scene where Rumple goes home and tells... Bellfire that her mother, his mother's dead, and Bellfire basically just starts crying. He's, he's bawling in tears, um, and Rumpel comforts him and tells him that he will never let anything happen to him again. So it's a really, really kind of touching scene, but we know how that ends, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know why it was cut. To be honest, um, time, maybe, uh, yeah, probably. But it's one thing I can think of. Yeah. But yeah, so granted, you know, she's got a hot pirate on one hand and a crippled husband on the other. I mean, come on. Yep. But yeah. <laughs> so tough choices. Yeah, so we had we had Rumple Stiltskin as himself before he became the dark one go on to hook ship and wanted demanded Mila to come home. And uh Hook basically offered to duel him and Rumpel was too much of a coward then, and left. Uh, then later on, after he becomes the Dark One, this could be anywhere from... I think they, they mentioned that when when Rumpel, as the Dark One, confronted Hook and Mila, and we had that big sword fight thing, I think they mentioned that it was like four or five years had passed. Yeah. So, um... So it was after Balefire was in the portal... No. It was... It was probably just before. I think... Well, maybe... I don't know. Well, okay, so... He still he's had trying, he's trying, no, he's trying to. No, he didn't. He didn't. Because he's trying to get the magic bean. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. Oh, before. that's right. Yep. Yeah, he's trying so to get the magic just bean. just after... That's where Mr. Smee comes and they make the deal. You know, whatever. And, and Smee offers to trade uh, magic... Uh, Rumple a magic bean to, um, for eternal life. Rumpel's like, I can't do that, but I can make you a kid again. And then you, do that. You, it's, it's like a reset. There you go. So he's like, okay, we'll do it. And How are you going to do that? Do you know why you can do that? Because you've seen it happen before your very eyes, Rumpel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your father. Mm-hmm. So, um, but then, like I mentioned, Rumpel returns, uh, to Hook, basically turns the tides on him, and he's like, look, you know, let, how, how about that duel you challenged me forever ago? You know, uh, Rumpel, you cheated. Well, yeah, of course he cheated, but so the choreography on that fight was still really good. I loved it. I loved it for for uh, someone as old as as Robert Carlyle. I mean, he's not sixty, seventy years old by any means, but I'm just saying he's he's up there in years. He's a lot older than um, <coughs> Hook, for example. Uh, I can't think of his the actor's name. Colin. Colin. Um, 
he, he's a lot, of, you know, he's older than him. So for, for what they were dealing with, with choreography there, I thought it was fantastic. I liked it. I don't know, Robert Carlyle, um, and all the stuff, even, like, that movie he was in, he's still a very nimble man. Oh, he is. He's in shape. So, he's I mean. very short, so it helps. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't think age. He has a low age, center of gravity. I don't think age is a, an issue here. It's 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 experience, and he's been acting for a very long time. So, yeah, I'm actually curious how old uh, Robert Carlyle is. I'm gonna look, but um, but yeah, and then we have Mila step in in the middle of the duel. Uh, so, bitch, I thought you were dead. Yeah, bitch, I thought you were dead. Right? I was hoping you were dead. I have to admit that her outfit was on point. I wanted to, um, maybe I I'll do that. Her outfit. I love that outfit. I mean, this is the season for Renaissance fairs, and so every time I'm watching once, I'm just like, give me that costume. I need that. I need that. I need that costume. I need, I need that. I, need, uh, Eric, I have to wear it. He's, I, need, I need to. Robert Carlyle is 56 years old mm-hmm. right oh. now, so at the time of filming, he was like 52, 53. So. Uh, Lewis, you say Rumpel finally fought for who he loved. No, he didn't. He fought because Hook humiliated him, and he doesn't like that. Yeah, yep. that's literally what it was. Um, it feels so weird. Robert Carlyle is 16 years older than me. Yeah. That's... I feel old. <laughs> I thought you were like 27. Oh, thank you. God bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and they they deal with this whole thing over she you know she'll give him the magic bean uh in exchange for her and hook's life and then he basically pulls her aside and asks why she left bay and she said that it's because she never loved rumple uh misery clouded her judgment and then rumple rips out mila's heart and crushes it uh hook i think oh uh, sorry just hmm what when she said that, when she's like, "I never loved you," well, I think the reason why she left Bay, even though she might have le- might have that motherly love, she le- I think she left him because she- he was a part of Rumple, and she couldn't stand Rumple. So any part of him, she just just like. Psh, it's it's probably a big thing, and the thing is, I, she did love um, Rumple at one point. It was when he came back from the war and refused yeah. to fight. Did, you know. did she though? Uh, they were happy before that. Are you sure? We've seen flashbacks. Yeah. Are you sure? Is that real happiness? I think it was. I think she kind of settled. I think she was settled. It's it's possible. <laughs> it's possible, but I mean, it, I mean, it was. It she was, was like... still happy though. She was still happy. Maybe she wasn't one hundred percent happy, but she was still happy. I think she convinced herself that she was happy. Maybe she got pregnant and they had to get married. Well, no, no, she didn't. Oh, one she, of get, those. Didn't she get pregnant. Like, I don't know when she got pregnant, actually, but... They don't Maybe. ever say. I'm they sorry, say I'm way. sorry, but getting pregnant is never a reason to have to get married. No, I Back then, well, Back in those was, days, it's yeah. like... For, for some religions, it still is. Back in those days, you guys act like you know how the how the the law works, or the, or the lay of the land works in the Enchanted Forest. Uh, yeah, we do, because we've been watching yeah. this damn thing for like six <laughs> days. I'm pretty sure we have the authority to say what works and what does not work in this universe. Okay. okay. I mean, look at Korra. I mean, look, I was just, oh my god. I was just going to say that. With Selena. <laughs> she, yeah, because after she got, when she got pregnant, she was ostracized. She was an outcast. No one wanted to even talk to her. No one wanted to lay a hand on her yep. because she was damaged good, according to them. Mm. Yep. Back then, women were good. They weren't because they're people. They were goods. They were betrayed. That's why there was dowries when you got a woman. You got money for that woman. It it's, it was horrible. Yeah, as Lou yeah. says in chat, Mila was frustrated and unhappy, but that's no excuse for abandon, uh, you're abandoning your son. Well, of course, hundred percent agree. Anyway, during this this crushing of Mila's heart, um, Hook, you know, gets really upset over it. Gets mad, whatever, and he re- he's refusing to give the bean now. Um, he's holding it. Tighten his hand, and well, Rumpel you chops don't, his hand You don't off. deserve the bean. Right. That was not the deal. <laughs> you don't no, deserve the bean. I agree. But Rumpel chops his hand off, takes his hand. Well, bitch, goes... you should have, like, checked first. Yeah, and he goes back Are home. He... 
he opens the hand up, and we re- it's revealed that Hook slipped the bean into his pocket and was <laughs> pretending to hold the bean. There's too many, there's too many jokes. Hold on. I gotta... Okay, go on with the bean, bean talk. So, Hook was playing pocket pool and took the bean out of his pocket. <laughs> See, no, you can't do that with the pocket that that's that high into the, it's in the chest area. I don't know. To the other hand. I had a math teacher in middle school that was very good at pocket pool. Okay, okay. Let's oh, God. It was gross. But I did notice that when uh, Rumpel was undoing the hand, I think they had someone's hand on the side holding it because when they were he was peeling the fingers, they were actual real fingers. And then all of a sudden it was a prosthetic. And then it was back to real hands. And then it was a prosthetic. <laughs> yeah. They, they got to do the funky stuff for that kind of scene, though. So. Well, you know what? You, sometimes, you know, prosthetic hands are expensive and sometimes they deteriorate over time. Or maybe, you know, they stay out in the sun too long and they melt. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so then we cut back to Hook, and we, we have him take the bean out of his pocket, throws it into the water, and, uh, he's basically, that's when he recruits Mr. Smee, uh, takes him, tells him, you know, he can actually grant him eternal life, and takes him to a place where they'll never grow old, and, uh, brings them to Neverland. This is the first mention of Neverland in the series. Yes. So, yeah. um, I thought well, that, I mean... Yeah, I thought it was really good. I I love that because it's like ah, oh, we get to see you know some Neverland. We get to you know this is where Hook's going, but then it's revealed Hook's actually you know in present day Storybrooke, so he's not in Neverland anymore. And there's you know there's a lot of walky stuff going on. So. I'd like well, to also, know. We, we learned that he's been there before, so it also gave me like how did he get out of Neverland if it's in a different realm? <sighs> you know. Yeah. How'd you hear about Neverland? Yeah, and stuff, so, so. But then we get that backstory with him and his brother and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. No, and we got so, some good stuff out of it, so. So I'd like to know, like, um, how, what what was it that you thought was in Neverland that you think would help to kill Rumpel? I think he was biding his time. Like, keeping himself from aging. I like, mean. Out of an idea. Uh, I don't remember if, if, if he. If I don't he remember if to... he knew. Did he? Does he know Tinkerbell at this point? I don't remember. Well, wasn't he there before I with his brother? Know. He was. Yeah. I don't know if he had met Tinkerbell yet. Because yeah. if he did, he probably <laughs> knows like the whole thing with like Rumpel. The, the Tinkerbell berries. arrived there after she lost her wings. After she exiled herself. So. I want. I was wondering if like Tinkerbell like has like some sort of like fairy knowledge as to like what the Dark One is and like how you can destroy them, possibly. I don't know. There's always that. There was always that. Question. All but, I know is when this show is over, I want someone, and I said the same thing about Lost, and I never saw this, but I want someone to cut every scene and put it in chronological order. Well, you know, copyright laws and whatever else, but um, somebody somebody do that, and there's then also, I'll you watch it and try to take it down. This whole thing with Tinkerbell and, you know, Neverland and Hook and stuff. There's, when it first came out, there was a whole bunch of, like, well, maybe Hook and Tinkerbell hooked up at Which Neverland. They hooked, hooked up. <laughs> they mm. hooked up in Neverland. Mm. <laughs> but they had, they had, like, they had angry sex is what they, that's what that was. They angry had, sex. they had, like, I, I need to release sex. They, it was just, yeah. Something to do. I love. To get away with the Lost Boys. Huh. Lewis has a theory that the blue fairy is Hook's mother. Yeah. She's. Well, you know, the bitch can still get it, you know, being like, you know, a billion years old. Hey, she did did have the hooker outfit, you know, when she was blue. Or the stripper outfit. But we also know that blue is the oldest character that we know of uh, on the series right now. She's older than Rumple, and Rumple's 900 years old. She knew older about Merlin. She knew about all the dark ones. So she's, you know, she's older than yeah. Merlin. She's older Which than makes every me wonder, dark one. It makes me wonder where was Blue like during that Merlin time when he got his magic. Oh. Actually, wouldn't um, Zeus be like the oldest being? Um, maybe we don't know that for sure. Yeah. Um. 
if you are keeping, if you following everyone here is following me, all the actors, and even Colin plays Hook on Twitter. Um, it was mentioned that they're hoping he hopes and or he hopes they're going to, but it's been like mentioned covering his mother, um, yeah, covering his mother about yeah. yeah that. I mean, they covered what happened with him and his dad, kind of his brother and his dad and stuff. His dad's yeah. an asshole, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, doing a little more backstory and Hook. Since Emma's not there anymore, and it's just Hook. How about the other women, I think I think that would be that would be an amazing backstory about you know him and his brother and his and then his mom and what happened and if why Blue his dad is just, why Hook's there had mother. to be a reason. There had to be a reason why his dad, besides just me and money, as dad sold his two sons. Yeah, well, we never found out like why that was. No, he never. Dad, I don't you know. think. I don't think he ever did either. And he went back. He tried. Remember, he tried to go back, but his dad died. But he found out he has his brother. Well, he killed his poor dad. But yeah, just put there. Captain um, Nemo. If, if Blue is Hook's mother, then that would mean that wouldn't Hook have magic? No. Not it necessarily. Was, he had the potential. Yep. I mean, look at Rumple. Regina didn't have magic. Or he was the dark one. And then she learned it. But, but she had potential. That's what he saw in her. That's why yeah. he pursued. Do y'all remember the theories back in season two that Rumple was Regina's mother? <laughs> Father? Wait. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. I do not remember this. but No, but like there was like theories going around that Rumple was Regina's father because in the last episode when he was teaching her magic, he said, oh, we've met before. Yeah, but he didn't cool. really, he didn't elaborate on that. They though. met when she was a baby. Exactly. That's, and so, like, people assumed, like, oh, that's her dad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that about covers the crocodile episode. Um, as for the Doctor episode, <coughs> in present-day Enchanted Forest, um, we are leaving off with more stuff with Hook. We have uh, the camp who was attacked by Korra. Uh, all the people's hearts were ripped out, except for Captain Hook, who is stuck in the ruins. Uh, Emma is the only smart one here, and, worry, and is worried that this is just another trick by Korra, because it's rather sloppy of her. Um, and, just and, a bit, it's a one-handed uh, metal worker. One-handed yeah. Smith. One-handed Smith. Yeah, that's not going to that's, and you know, Cora can just do the magical whooshy whoosh, and like everybody's dead. So. Yeah. That, that that doesn't. That yeah, doesn't I'm trying work. to figure out. There's, you, you have to metal smith with two hands. You have to be a smith with two you hands. Have you have to do hold it. the thing, the tongs, and then hammer. And then it, then yeah. hammer. Somebody else yeah. can hold it. Uh, okay, maybe he was standing on it with his feet and like squatting. <laughs> That's how he did it. Or maybe he had a thing that was made for his hand. Out of okay, metal. whatever we say is wrong because that's not what actually happened. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see flashbacks of Hook as a metal worker with one hand. Now, um, I mean, he could probably just like screw in like a, a tong apparatus to hold with the one hand, and then. No, he made the story up. It's not real. Right. I know, but it's right. just like. Just, it's I not mean, real, but he did metal work for the camp, so yeah, when, it was when, real. He was telling the story. I'm like, who's believe it? Who's believe in this? Well, no, because uh, even even uh, Mulan backed it up and said, no, no, he's a metal worker that came here uh, a couple but, weeks ago or a month ago or something. But like was that. he really, or did Cora just? Plant I assumed those he was doing metal work for them while she was. Or did Cora plant there. those memories in their head? Because we know that can happen. That I don't know. I don't think, I don't think Cora has that magic. We don't know. I, I think she. I think she can erase she... memories. She can erase memories, but she can't like put in new ones because we know that she erases Regina's memory of Zelina. Well, we do know that she can plant illusions. Hmm. So I mean, That's I maybe like... maybe Hook was there and she made it look like he was doing the work. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, Emmy Emmy uses her superpower on Hook to see if he's lying. And Superpower then, you don't have. And then threatens to feed him to the ogres, ties him to a tree, starts wildly shooting in the air again. 
Yeah, pew, pew. Did you not learn anything Girl, from last time? You don't have unlimited. Well, that's the whole point. Yeah, she I was saying. On purpose. You're not in. What did they call that mode in 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 GoldenEye where you could have an infinite bullets? Unlimited ammo mode. Yeah. Okay. Well, that yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> just turned on that cheat mode and just. Yeah. Yes. Well, she, uh, yeah. Uh, and then this gets Hook to tell the truth. And he does tell the truth. He said that, um, he made a deal to get a compass for Korra to go to Storybrooke. Um, and if, if they're willing to help him get the compass, he could bring them and betray Korra. And Emma's like, well, give me one reason why you want to go there. And he goes, well, I want to, uh, kill the Dark One. Okay, I have one little thing. Did the ogre before uh, crush her gun? So how did she have another one? Yeah, I thought he crushed it. Uh, he did, and she tossed didn't, it. Didn't he crush it in this episode? No, no. He crushed it in the before when Mary Margaret shot his eye. Yeah, out. it was the first her yeah. first encounter with an ogre, and yes. she went to go shoot it, and he not he grabbed it from her hand and went. <laughs> yeah, he crushed she it. He went back to go find it. It was, and like, then, all mangled up. Mm-hmm. See, she stepped on it a little bit, and it's fine. <laughs> she, <laughs> she had Hook work on it. <laughs> yeah. She, she completely forgot that Hook was working on her gun this whole time. Or she has another one. <laughs> but I don't think she... Where did she stick it? Up her crotch? I don't know. She has a it's jacket. A next, it's a new pocket. <laughs> well, she had, pocket. Her, she, she had the gun in her... She had the gun in her boot. So, or it may have been a spare gun. gun. Yeah, she I, may have I had guess. two. I only thought I thought she only brought one, but you know it could be. But you know, yeah. I thought it was kind of weird. It's like, dude, the ogre crushed your gun. How did you? Mm-hmm. How did you get a new one? I didn't even notice, and like, cause like, yeah, I know someone asked me up in chat earlier what I think of Emma in this episode, and it was Alex. It was Alex, and yeah. you know, I just. Maybe if you would have asked me like the first time I watched this episode, I would have been able to give you a better, <laughs> a better answer. But like, I'm just done with Emma. <laughs> I, I almost every scene she's in now, I'm just like, huh? Oh, hey, there's something shiny over there. Look, there's a sky raisin. <laughs> yeah. So they want to know where this compass is, and he leads them to the beanstalk. And they, they're they worried about climbing the beanstalk. And he goes, oh, no, no. It's not the climb you have to worry about. It's the giant at the top. And oh, and Tiny's a nice guy. That's Come kind on. of where we left this. So um, Isn't this when we get the whole um, David's brother and Jack? Yeah. Yes. Soon? Yes, that's coming very, very soon. That, yeah. I keep forgetting that David has a brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, James and the Giant Peach. Wait, what? That's we've been Always. we've been joking about that forever. Yeah, Isn't, is I, that a euphemism? I, I know. <laughs> yes. Jack has I, the giant. I, I, I've exactly. always um, found that movie creepy. So. Oh, I love that movie. That's technically a Disney movie. I know. Mm-hmm. The same way that uh, Nightmare Before Christmas is a Disney movie. Yep. Um. So then we have present day story, Brooke. That was, that, was, that was what we were dealing in present day Enchanted Forest. In present day Storybrooke, we get the story of Dr. Whale. Um, Dr. Whale approaches and gets punched by David. Really, really satisfying. Oh, that was David. hilarious. Mm-hmm. What was up for? Sleeping with my wife? Yep. We, were, we weren't Catherine? even us. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's so Catherine. confused. He probably Catherine. slept with Catherine, too. Yeah, he, he probably, probably did. did. Um, and then Whale inquires about all the lands existing. So I'm sitting here remembering back to the first time I ever watched this. And I was like, okay, so he's not from the Enchanted Forest? And I'm really still, like, frustrated trying to figure out where he's from. Uh, and then he so dem- he barges in on Regina's session with Jiminy. Um, that is an pro pro, dude. Yep. Uh, demands to go back to his land to get back to his brother. Uh, yet... We find out his brother is dead, uh, and then uh, we have uh, Doctor Hopper being like, "Yeah, but Regina, you brought back your father. 
uh, or or that and and um was it the father did you yeah she brought back the father's grave and she brought back uh um daniel she brought daniel over yeah. so she said yeah because i wanted them to so apparently she could choose who came over so why did she leave certain people behind like hook then and, and stuff she like didn't that care well she doesn't really care about hook she knew hook but like as far as she knew hook was dead because she sent him to like she sent him to Wonderland. He never came back. Mm. It's also possible that when she was crafting the curse, she didn't know he was back. Um, yeah, that, she that probably didn't care didn't about all those people or know that they existed kind of thing. I mean, well, those people didn't matter to her. <laughs> yeah, she had no ties. In Neverland. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, but, like, she had no ties to Mulan, Mulan. or yeah. Philip or any of them. So, like, she probably just didn't care. Like, yeah. I don't need that. Yep. Um, but now Regina starts having what she believes are visions of uh, Daniel. And, uh, but, you know, Daniel's dead. We She put a preservation enchantment on him in her vault. Uh, so she goes running to her vault, but his body's missing. So we find out that Whale came and uh, took the corpse. Took a heart. Took a heart. And basically brought him back to life, creating a monster. So now this is the point where we kind of have put two and two together, if this was your first time watching, and realized he's Dr. Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Yes. See, so. I don't... Okay, when they... He explains... When, well, Rumpel <laughs> explains the heart is basically becomes enchanted. It's like the soul, basically, and the soul of that person. Because you can make them do whatever you want. Not like a. They just pick a random heart. What if it's some like freaking jackass? Well, that that was yeah. Well, that was in the. We didn't get to that part yet, where we're in the flashbacks. But in present day, we don't know where or whose heart he's using in, um, Storybrooke. So. Same with that. At the same. T yeah, but at the same time, David is giving um, a horse to Henry, trying to train him to become a knight and basically clean up after him. Take care of him. Never see this horse again. Never. Never. Um, and just just for Rachel, the ho the horse was in stall eight. Another lost number. Um, <laughs> now Nikki's getting aggravated, too. If the, horse, <laughs> if the horse's name was Mr. Ed, I would have liked it better. Mm -hmm. my, my mission of mentioning everything that is, is in the series to do with Lost is, is now not only getting under Rachel's skin, but has moved on to Nikki's as well. And mission accomplished. So no, I just I just if, if it becomes like irrelevant to the story, I don't want to fucking hear it anymore. <laughs> every Unless lost damn polar every bear lost Easter egg in, in this show episode, is irrelevant care. to the story. Every Easter egg is irrelevant to the story. That's no, the some, point of like, an Easter no, egg. No, it, sometimes it makes sense, but in this case, it's just a stall for a horse. Right, but. It's still, just it's like just, I'm lost. Like I said, it's just the fact anytime any of those numbers, anytime you hear any number, doesn't matter if it's a time, if it's a number on the wall or whatever, it's a lost number. Guaranteed. Just like I'm lost, the numbers don't mean a damn thing. <laughs> uh, unless you're playing the lotto. But, so, Daniel then shows up at the stables, corners Henry, and Regina and David <laughs> run in to save him. Regina demands to talk to him. She wants to be able to give him a proper <laughs> goodbye. Um... And then has to deal with him as a monster. And then deals with basically killing him and losing him all over again. So it ended up being worse for her uh, in the end. So Well, he was is, obviously, we don't know whose heart it was in the first place. So obviously no. he was struggling between who he was when he was living and who he, and who he became now. So. I mean, this is interesting. I mean, this is uh, basically the Frankenstein story of the monster realizing that he's not he doesn't have you know his own sense of self mm -hmm. because these are just parts from somebody else in this case he, though it is daniel's body but yeah. it's not his heart no. it's also, so it's like he almost has like memories and feelings of another person like he has to you know, himself and then someone else inside yeah. of him so yeah. yeah um this is like one of the the first steps that it come like where Regina starts to be humbled, so that you know she yeah. she's going down that road where she realizes like she needs to 
not be evil anymore. Yep. Um, and then we get a little scene of Whale asking Rumple to reattach his arm, and the only thing Rumple wants out of it is for Whale to admit that he has a need for magic, something that we'll we'll talk about in a minute in the flashbacks. Um, ah. Something that he, he always said that his work was more powerful than magic. Um, and, is it, though? And There's uh, magic that can do exactly what you do, dude, and they do it better. And he wants to go back uh, to his brother because the last time didn't go so well. So the last time with his brother, and then this time in Storybrooke didn't go very well, so he wants to try it again with his brother. Well, when does it ever Third time's a charm, dude. Yeah, or three strikes, you're out. Oh, I like, man. I like the name of his brother. His name, The brother's name is Gerhardt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hart. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know, we all know what happened. It didn't turn out well uh, because, you know, Dr. Will became a zombie. And, you know, just... <laughs> oh, yeah, that happened. Yeah, yeah. it didn't, didn't turn out real well. And Tinkerbell so was did there, too. And... Yeah, oh, and, Dr. Uh... Dr. Well and Tinkerbell both became zombies and moved to a new show. But um, we have flashbacks. It's on the CW. <laughs> we have flashbacks of Rumple training Regina, um, and she won't take the heart out of the unicorn. And then this is when Rumple starts explaining when you take when you remove the heart, um, it becomes enchanted. It becomes stronger than a normal heart and allows you to control uh, the beast. But Regina still refuses to kill the unicorn. I wouldn't kill the unicorn. Um, I was it's watching a motherfucking this. unicorn. <laughs> exactly. I was watching this on the TV, and uh, my daughter has been kind of like watching like with a side eye she's not interested okay, okay. Of course, she's and, a preteen she's not interested in anything <laughs> right and she's watching the scene and then rumple just sticks his hand in and rips out the heart of the unicorn she's like what a dick hey you don't you know this what? unicorn could have killed thousands of people you know, so like, if any of y'all watch Gravity Falls, you know that unicorns are fucking dicks. <laughs> well, and like, just like Mabel said in that episode, morality is relative. Look at Charlie and his After friends. She kills the his friends are absolute dicks. Yeah. Those aren't his friends. <laughs> Charlie. Candy Mountain, Charlie. Charlie, you wanna go to Candy Mountain? It's a choo choo <laughs> shoot, Charlie. <laughs> Ooh, a normal. Oh god! What did I start? It's a narwhal, Charlie. We have to be sneaky, Charlie. <laughs> How do your legs move like that? Um, but <laughs> anyway, um, so she admits to Rumple the real reason why she wants to learn magic. Um, she wants to be able to bring Daniel back from the dead, which you can do. No, not with magic. Yes, you can. You can do anything with magic. We brought. Did the genie tell you thing? The you genie can't even do it. The dead. Yeah. The genie can. No, the genie. So, like, we've seen that the rules of magic have been broken before. They have. If the genie can, he doesn't like doing it. Is that a pretty sight? <laughs> yeah. Because then this kind of shit happens. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because because then it's like there's even if there's how soul, many people have died it might be their show. soul moved on but to resurrect many. their body it might pull their soul back from wherever it is so it's like half soul half. maybe Ew. their soul doesn't maybe their soul doesn't come back mm. yeah but uh, as much as we joke though the disney movies aren't canon in the world of once upon a time so yeah. um you know but, but we do people... we do learn in once upon a time in wonderland that one of the rules that the genies have is they can't bring people back from the dead because that's one of the rules that is broken when Jafar breaks the laws of the genie. Which I think it, I think that kind of... This is why I think the rules of magic can be broken in this show, but they never explain why. I think when they broke the rules of magic in Wonderland, it broke it for like all the realms, but they only fixed it in Wonderland. It's possible, but I don't know. And it, it I don't know. I don't know if it broke it magic real... in general. I think it just broke the rules of the genie. Um, yeah. Like genie's magic um, is different. Well, they than always magic. say, but they always refer to it as the rules of magic, right. not the rules yeah, not of magic the of the genie. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it, it was implied have, it that it was the it. genie, though. Yeah, well, because Cora said too when she was in that episode that one time. When Anastasia asks her, well, like, can the rules be broken? And she said no. So I think that applies to all magic. 
it's possible. It, it might it might have had like a, like a ripple effect throughout the you know one drop in a pond and then the ripple effect throughout all the other realms. So maybe they weren't broken, but just bent. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, we don't know exactly how that worked and how that was covered, so we can only speculate. But I think it would it. I think it was implied that it was only the genie, the rules of the genie. I think it was that specific genie that was empowered um, with those those powers. I don't think it it just ripple effect to every genie. No, I just I think it it's a general rule for magic. So anyway, we had. Because because depending on where your soul go, goes, it either comes back or it doesn't. And you know, obviously, we got the Hades thing. And so, if they, they come back. He, they're pulling souls out of hell, and he's not going to be too happy about that shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah that's probably why it's messy. Because Hades comes up to kick your ass. <laughs> yep. So anyway, we had the return of Jefferson. Um, so we did get Jefferson. Jefferson. He did come back in one yeah, more. Yeah, you cut your hair. Um, so, Back when he was still doing his little business. Yes. So this is, this that, Jefferson he, drops off. This, this, is before, this is before his daughter and stuff, I'm guessing. Yeah. Way before. This, this is, is before the first the time he met Regina, and that's mm-hmm. why Regina comes back in that episode yes. to recruit him again. So Jefferson gives a crystal ball to Rumple. Uh, Rumple's still looking for slippers, so this is this is a mention of Wizard of Oz. So we had we had to mention the episode before of Neverland. We had an episode mentioned here for Wizard of Oz, which we both we get both next season. Um, and um, uh, Jefferson mentions that the the slippers already were transported to another realm. So definitely, that's where I want to go. And yeah. Rumple said that's the land I wanted to go to. Why do you want to go to Oz? Uh, for Zelina. Was he really which is, seeking? Which we I thought find did he out later. know about? Did he know about Zelina? No, he knows about he Zelina. Does. But like, what did he her. like go out to like seek her? No, yeah, I don't think he was point? seeking her. I know she was seeking him. Yes. Mm-hmm. But like, why? I'm wondering. Like at this point, does he is he training Zelina? I, think, I don't think he is. Well, I think the reason he wanted to go to Oz was for the ruby slippers. Yeah. Not well. Not well, he wants. But he wants the slippers, though. That's why he, that's right. what he was asking. Right. And he wants so, the like, slipper. I think yeah. the slippers weren't originally in Oz. It sounds well, like they were somewhere else. Because the slippers, the power of the slippers are, think of where you want to go, and it will transport you there. So I think Rumple yeah. wanted the slippers to go to Balefire. I think that was that's of why course. he wants the slippers. But he said that they were transported to another realm, and we see the slippers later in Oz. So I think they weren't originally in Oz. And wherever well, they were transport, whoever transported in them. Well, the went thing to is, Oz. they were in the enchanted forest. They were somewhere. And then when Rumple asks for the slippers, that's when he says, "But they're in another realm." As in, they just went to Oz. Like they. And then, they but were Rumple used says, "Rumple says that realm is where I wanted to go to." No, he says that's where I want to go to because the slippers are there. Mm. He's after the slippers. He's chasing the slippers. But I think Jefferson said like where the slippers, and Jefferson says. Oh, they were transported to another realm, and then... Rumple, Rumple goes, said, that's where I want to go. So wherever those slippers are, that's where Rumple wants to go. Right. So You never get the slippers, by the way, Rumple. No, never. So anyway, I like, Jefferson's I like how we're hat... Getting to see these. Jefferson's hat, we learn, will not go to a land without magic. So that's why he wants the slippers. Um, and how did you get to the world without color? There's no magic in that world. There, There's a bit of color. There's a bit of color. There's a bit of magic there but not in the way that we have typical magic. Yeah. It's a different type of magic. Yeah. Um, anyway, he oh, offers it, oh, a deal to... logic? Kind of. He offers a deal to Regina, um, a royal pass to traverse her kingdom whenever he wants. Um, in return, he will bring uh, Regina to Dr. Frankenstein. Or so bring him to her, rather. This is where we meet Victor, uh, and he is... Um, looking for enchanted hearts, um, because he he needs one to withstand the shock of his procedure, um, and then they go to to Cora's vault. Now, once again on the DVD, there is a deleted scene of them trying to escape the vault. Once they take the heart from the vault, the walls start to close in. So, um, Regina asks Jefferson to use the hat. Um, 
but he said that there's not enough room. There's there's the because the walls, you know, and all that, and it can't yeah. expand and all. There's not enough room. So after um, Frankenstein and Jefferson use um, a statue to block jar the wall, uh, the ceiling starts coming down. So this is when Regina um, masters the uh, uh, act of teleportation. This is the first time she's ever used this power. Um, oh, the wooshy woosh? Yeah. So we get to see that, but we don't get to see that because that's on the DVD. So if you have the DVD, you get to see that. Um, so that's kind of a cool little scene that was deleted. Um, but then they go outside the tent and... Uh, he goes to do the experiment on Daniel, all this stuff, which we later find out was not actual, a, a real experiment. He lied about the uh, the heart not being strong enough. This was part of his deal with Rumpel, um, that by faking the failed experiment, he is able to keep the enchanted heart, um, and then Jefferson will take him home. So, in, in the same regard, this helps Regina... Um, kind of take on a new light because she goes to see Rumple again. Rumple's training a new apprentice and Regina rips her heart out. So yeah, she kind of looked like Esmeralda. She looked like a gypsy. She did. She looked a lot like Esmeralda. Which I'm kind of curious if it was. Um, and then uh, we, we deal with uh, Victor trying to bring his brother back to life. Uh, we do see Igor. Um, and he's, he's spouting off that, you know, this is not magic, this is science. And, you know. Science! He's one of those, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Which, for a bit of reference, that was the big theme of Lost, was faith versus uh, yeah. science. Man of faith, man of science. It was a back and forth. So they kind of struggle with that theme here, you know, as well. It's the writers, they like that theme. And it's, it's yeah. honestly, it's a, it's a really good theme. So. Well, um, we see something similar later this season. Yes. Kind of. Yes. So, um, I think that about does it for these two episodes here, though. Mm -hmm. So, um, as I mentioned in pre-show, for those of you um, that follow us live, we will be doing the next two episodes, uh, episodes six and seven, we'll be doing uh, this coming Monday. And then episodes eight and nine will be two days later on Wednesday, uh, just so we can catch back up before mm -hmm. Once Upon a Time airs live. Uh, episode six is called Tallahassee, uh, which is a title ripped straight from Lost. Um, and this is the episode where um, Emma and uh, Neil are robbing car, you know, robbing things. Make, They're in the car. Make and, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that's that one, and then episode seven is the Little Red Riding Hood backstory uh, called Child of the Moon, which is another. This is my favorite episode. episode of this season. Peter, yeah. Peter and the Wolf. Uh, uh, Peter is the Wolf. What? He's no. not though. No, no, I Peter's, know. Peter's Root. dead at this point. Yep. Root. But uh, also, um, a little something if you guys didn't know, um, Gideon is supposed to return next season. Yes. Yes. I was going to mention that actually oh, yeah, earlier yeah. we were talking and about. And Belle is supposed to show up for like an episode or two. Mm -hmm. The same um, episode that Gideon returns, Belle's going to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Grown up Gideon, baby Mo, who's not a baby anymore, but you know, time has passed, obviously, so he's not a baby anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to call him baby Mo. Baby Mo's a baby. Um, baby Mo. Also, we got some new watch. characters. Yes. So we have the new Cinderella. Um, we have the new, uh, the new stepmother. I don't think her lady, name Tremaine. Is lady Tremaine. It is Lady Tremaine. It is? Okay, good. Because yes. we also have Drizella. Not Anastasia. That's funny, isn't it? I wonder mm. where she is. Um, and also we have an, we have a new Alice and Tiana, who I am excited mm -hmm. about because I've been fucking asking for she's been waiting in the corner, you guys. Like yep. she's waiting in the corner with Giselle and with Esmeralda. Why aren't you guys picking them up? Oh my god, Giselle. My daughter who loved her back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> we all know Giselle can make it from cartoon to real life, so yeah. mm -hmm. she's yeah. done it before. She knows how to do it. And wouldn't it be awesome to see our characters go into the cartoon world and there'd be like, why? Why do we oh look God. like? That would like, be an awesome the episode. Like they go through like a 
hole or something, they end up being all animated. There, there's like a little mini curse, and yeah. they all get animated. That would be awesome. That and then you have sweet. Adina Menzel's character in there who also played Elsa, and no. turns out it's the same actress who played Elsa in this no. show. They're like, you look familiar. No. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, and then a side note for the character of Dr. Whale, for those of you that may not know, um, one of the Easter eggs that they threw in for those that, you know, were, were curious about his name and everything on the, um, the path to trying to discover who he was, um, the, the reason why they chose Whale is because the director of the Frankenstein movies, his name was James Whale, so that's where they took that name from. Um, but it was kind of obscure because it's like, oh, it's the director of this series, you know, you, you don't, you wouldn't instantly place that, but that, that's why they chose that for his Storybrooke counterpart's name. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting, I would like them to do more with Frankenstein and more of these, uh, classic monsters that we know. We've done the werewolf already, interesting, um, and we've done, you know, Dr. Frankenstein and the monster. We haven't done any vampires, um... I we would like to bring any. them in as And we've uh, done Dracula. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We've done Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but for like that was, you know, a shitty way he wrote them out of the story. Yeah. But um Dracula would be awesome. Yeah, if Dracula they, if they don't as go, kind of like if a someone doesn't go blah blah blah, blah dude. I wrote them. Dracula one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lewis in chat says they can't do Giselle, I think, because they'd had to pay Amy Adams for her image and name, I may be wrong. Uh, yeah. Maybe you don't have to use her image, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, she... I don't think she owns it. She doesn't own the character. Well, that was... Th we're talking about Giselle from the movie Enchanted, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so they can't... There was a big... She, she's played by Amy Adams. Yeah. That's why they never made dolls of her or anything like that, because they don't own her likeness, but she doesn't own the character. Correct. There was a big thing about this, um, that they were going to make Giselle a uh, Disney princess, and she didn't give them permission to use their likeness. So that is why the character in any form has never appeared again in Disney canon outside of that movie. Mm. Um, so chances are we probably won't get that. We, we could. You could we can have get, a character. We can get the character yourself. name that. Yeah, for sure. But mm -hmm. um, side note, uh, the character in the script, I don't know if they ever said her name, the character in the script that looked like uh, Esmeralda, her name was Trish. Um, Trish. That's that's what it was in the script. I don't think it ever made it to to screen. So, unfortunately, that was not uh, Esmeralda. No, it says she looked like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's, who's Trish? Is that significant, Trish? I don't think Trisha? so. Trish the dish. So, anyway, but yeah, th that is what we'll be doing next week. Um, we'll be we will be talking about those episodes. Um, mm -hmm. And Red Riding Hood is definitely another one of my favorite episodes this season. So. One where she was annoying. Yes. Yeah. It's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so that about does it. Jake, where can the people find you? You can find me and all of my giggles and gore and monsters and mayhem here on YouTube at Jacob Salazar, or you can find me on Twitter, tweeting me throughout the example life at Tunoverland. That is T-O-N-O-W-H-E-R-E-L-E-N-D. Join the Norland Society. Awesome. Nikki, where can the people find you? On Twitter at LadyVenom24, L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-N-24. Excellent. Rachel, where can the people find you? They can find me at VikingWitch76 on Twitter and at VikingWitch on Twitch. Awesome. You can find me down below at Phenomenon, P H E N O M E D O M. Phenomenon. Do, 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 do. Mm, 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 mm. And you can find <laughs> us all and more on Facebook, Gmail, G, Twitter, MySpace. <laughs> And right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, games, and movies. Until next time, see you guys later.